said next and to what was discussed over the last two weeks. If there are few people who didn't come in the last two weeks, don't worry about it. You can always find ways of plugging those things in. But <coughs> this whole aspect of Indian classical music, irrespective of Karnataka or Hindustani, is very, very at a base level a characteristic that you cannot miss. That every musician who is performing the musical tradition <coughs> is actively in the creative aspect of the music. It's not like composers have given us compositions and we present the compositions. There are two aspects to even the compositions that I left a little hanging that day, which I'll come back to come back to this, especially in terms of we had spoken about the oral tradition and uh, a certain aspect of the oral tradition that I had mentioned early in the morning last week, which I think I left hanging at some point of time. And uh, also another aspect of compositions that we have, which we did not deal with. Both those aspects I'll bring in along with one improvisational technique that we'll discuss today. So I will be flipping back a little bit onto what happened last week. As always, I'd love to start with questions. And as always, I like to start at a generic level rather than the specific level. So uh, the first question is um, a word that we would associate with, with this part of music is imagination. And so what is imagination? Make your pardon? Making some innovativeness. Okay, now we've got another word, innovativeness. Okay? Okay. Something different. Something different. And altered state of reality. Altered state of reality. Very interesting. So Anything else? Personalization. Could you develop it? Personal expression. Personal expression as being imagination. Okay? Anything else? Unreal, and this is another word that somebody used. What? You said altered state. In a way, you could could you connect the two? Okay. Anything else? Reinterpretation. Hmm. Uh, is imagination a physical act? First, I'm just again only asking questions. I am not giving answers. Is imagination a physical act? The question was, is imagination a physical act? Okay. You think it can be? Yeah. How? The process of imagination is a physical act. Okay, where is the process? Uh -huh. It's happening in my head that the process is... Okay, go on, go on, go on. I mean, the process, I mean, I don't know how to activate it, but... Um, if you say that, then we are in trouble, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Can you choose not to imagine? If you say you can choose to imagine, you should be able to. I could choose to now listen to you or I could choose to just switch off and imagine. Right? So you're saying as you listen to me, there's no imagination happening? That there is, but that's also a physical act, right? Because there is something going on and therefore that's a process. And therefore there is, it cannot happen if there is no. If there is what? No what? What? I can't hear you. It will be louder. Yeah, I mean, it, it pro probably any process in your head is some way a neurochemical process. Whether it's imagination or whether it is, uh, you know, anything else. It's, it's all neurochemical processes. But the fact is beyond the neurochemical process, which is uh, a back-end process, if you can use that word, there is uh, a conceptual process which is what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in which chemical is moving to which part of the brain, you know, kicking off which neuron in which part. I'm not interested in that in the sense what I'm interested in it is what does it do conceptually? What, 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 is, what, is, what is happening? I think, you have to, I think you have to be very conscious when you're imagining as well. For instance, if you're imagining uh, in music, uh, and you're actually like sort of, you can't just imagine like without actually being conscious about what you're imagining. Right? What do you mean? 
What do you mean? What do you mean? I, I'm just thinking. No, let it, let it finish. What do you mean? Is that the word you would use for that? I was going to come to that at the second stage of the discussion. Is imagination you would use the word you use for that? That's. I'm going to stop you here at that point of time, okay? Because I'm going to come back to that because it's many people are referring to something similar in saying something innovative. For example, I, I mean the word innovation is of course it itself a complex, but the act that you're saying it's something innovative. You're talking when I, you're talking about something that is presented to a point. I am even questioning whether imagination is about the expression of it. There is one, this is all manifestations, right? I think there is something else happening when imagination manifests. We have not even gone to that link yet, okay? We are still at the conceptual level of imagination. The reason I started this question is because this is precisely how you would view imagination, okay? And I just like, I would like to play with it a little bit because I think it's, it, is, it doesn't work that way. That's my perception, of course. In, no. Huh? Huh? I th <clears throat> playful with, it could be a playful vis visualization. You were going to say something. No, so when you say uh, you want to separate out what you, the, the process of imagination from how it manifests itself? Yes, because I think something else is happening. Something else happens. Uh, using another word here, dangerous word, very dangerous word, creativity, very dangerous yeah, word. Yeah. <laughs> but now you are qualitatively, you are giving a qualitative position to imagination by using that word for creative. Not necessary. This is where I disagree. This is where it comes from the word image. Yes, it does. It actually it actually derives it actually derives from the word of maker of, of an image or imagination. Okay. No, 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 no. We, the moment no no no. Reinterpret no no one second, one second. I would like to first go back to two comments that came first. You said something that's unreal, right? That's what's the word you used? And all that sense. I think those are very important words in terms of imagination. Imagination is about image. Okay? Firstly. And it can be multiple things. One of the things it can be is when you are create there is an act of creating or forming mental images over here. Then it is also a fact that those mental images are not those that are completely present in the world of senses. Okay? They could be, they are probably definitely triggered from the world of senses. But the imaging or the imagination is not in the world of senses. So imagination by itself is at a mental level. Now, not talking about music here, okay? Not talking about musical imagination. Then there is also the fact that there is a lot of things stored in your head, right? So imagination also plays a role in retrieving what is there. Probably combining it in ways that it has not been combined in the world of senses as you experience. Okay? So you want to call it recollection. I mean, I'm not going to get into the English issue over here. But there is that could be repositioning of all that the senses has taken in, right? There's also another aspect that the a trigger from the world of the senses or an associated suggestion from the world of the senses can play a role in re-imaging in the world of the mind. Okay? Is that okay? So what I would like to first say that imagination is not about the expression of it, but it is in a way a natural state. There is no human being who does not create images in his or her head. There is no human being. 
Every human being is creating an altered state of reality. You want to call it an altered state of reality, fine. But with this state of reality, using that word is kind of, can create you know, other kinds of problems. So I, that's why I prefer not to do that. But it is a kind of a mental image, a mental world, or a mental experience that you are forming based on present triggers, present stimuli, or past stimuli. But the fact is, what is being imaged is not part of the sensory world. Okay? Then there is, if the moment I said something, because the moment I looked into this, the next question that hit my head is, then how can we say some people are imagined more or are more you know, imaginative than the others? That was the first question that hit me. Because I think this is relevant. If everybody imagines and everybody has an imaginary world, what, what do you think is, makes a person more imaginative? I am not yet going into the act of expressing the imagination. Let's not go there. I am still in the world of imagery. Why do we feel, or why are, maybe, some people more imaginative, some people less imaginative? This is, of course, uh, an, a, a difficult thing to say because you're passing degrees at this, okay? And you, can you pass a degree at, say, your imagination is less imaginative than my imagination? It kind of sounds very silly to say something like that. Imagination is imagination. There's no, you can't grade it. But there is this perception that we all have that somebody is more imaginative and somebody is less imaginative. Good point. Agreed. Agree. I'm not disagreeing. But then I want to ask the further question that is it true, first of all? Is it true? Is it true that probably some people are less imaginative than the others? Why? First, is it true? If you have all agreed that it's, well, rather 70% have agreed here. Why? Okay, one. Okay, then I have to ask you, stop you here and ask you a question. I live in a small village. I get up every morning and all I do is shower, go to the farm, do my stuff, come back. I have kanji, go back home, have a lovely wife, two children, go to sleep. I live in the city. I travel the world. I've seen Rome. I've seen Alaska. I've seen Australia. I've gone to the most beautiful operas. I have seen the most beautiful Bharatanatyam performances. I have gone and watched cricket, tennis, everything. Who stimuli are more? Uh, no, the trigger is not determined by the stimuli. Then what is it? Uh, I interpret the trigger as a stimuli which I respond to. There might be 50 triggers. Okay, then it has got. No, okay, you you use the word trigger, right? Yes. You said there were many triggers. You didn't say there was. You know, now you're differentiating what you said, which I'm happy you're doing. I'm very happy you're doing it because I was hoping you would do it. So again, he, from the position of saying, if I can reinterpret what you said, sorry, that depending on the number of triggers that a person has, he has now repositioned what he said or reinterpreted what he said. Say, it's got nothing to do with the triggers, but it's got to do with myself. Yes. So we've, meet the posi we've moved from an external position to an internal position. Okay, good. What is the second point? I'm going to come back to that at some point. Very nice. What do you mean by attached? Very nice point, but I want to know what you meant. Uh, like, am I so engrossed in the trigger that it doesn't help me expand flow? Oh, you just got flipped on the other side. But that's okay. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> From what I was thinking, at least. <laughs> so you are so attached to it that you don't want to reinterpret it. You don't want to imagine so, it in some other No, no, no. no, no now you're, you're, again, you're making an assessment of... No, 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 you're not saying, I'm saying, you're saying that imagination reinterprets. Let's, it, you know, let's, let's not say, I, I, I'm not very sure I'm willing to put that qualitative uh, judgment on imagination. See, the point is, there's a trigger. I mean, like he said, there's a trigger. And his point is, the trigger doesn't matter. You could have 100 million triggers. The individual matters, point one. Point two, if you're too involved in that trigger, hmm. Can you give an example so I understand you better? Mm -hmm. a particular feature. I'm so attached to that. Now, 
as a person who is create who has to create the next version mm -hmm. if i'm attached to that particular feature mm -hmm. that every time i see that it gives me a kind of simulation okay so unless i let go of my attachments to that it mm. is not possible for me to create an alternate feature okay then i'm going to ask you by your your position are you even recognizing it as a trigger It is not a you are not recognizing. Uh, which are you saying? For me, it is not. I okay. don't. It, it's so in a way, natural. in a way, it's actually not got to do with your attachment, right? It's got to do with the fact that you have not recognized it as a trigger. Correct. Yeah. That's no, it's like you saying I'm extremely obsessed with Carnatic music. Okay. To me, it's the word. Does that mean that I lose trigger in what Carnatic music gives me? It's a similar. It's a similar situation. I could specific it to a raga also if you want. I can say X raga. I just love the raga. I've sung it for the last twenty years of my life. I'm so obsessed with how it should be, how it sounds, that there's nothing more I can really do. I mean, it's similar to that. But isn't that a more a problem that I don't have? I have, let's not get into that. But I don't. I'm not able to recognize that what I have in front of me or in me or around me. I'm not in a position to recognize it as being a trigger. I mean, I, I'll just give a complete, sim, sim, you know, a simple parallel, which not necessarily is about imagination, but it's about, I think, how we see. Um, I think I've used this somewhat. I'll use it again. It's like you drive every day to work, right? You drive every day to work. You take the same road, okay? You leave the same time, but what's around you is not the same every day. But Every time we'll say we came through the same road, the same shops are open, the same people are there. It's not the same, it's not. right? Yes. Now, in reflection, we all agree here. Yeah, absolutely not the same. Uh, the expression on the vendor's face is different. Uh, the bus, the people hanging out of the bus had different things to say from what they were. But the fact is, when we do that act every day in the morning, we do not see what is in front of us as being something else. Or something that itself is a trigger. Yes. Agree. So, to me, I think what I mean, I'm, I'm actually taking whatever I said from what you have said. I'm not saying anything <laughs> for myself. I see imagination as being a state that everybody is involved in. Whether you, I, and I, I to a large extent, don't think you consciously imagine. You imagine. That's it. I see. I see his. Um, is what iPad here and I just imagine I don't say okay now I need to sit and imagine about no it's not going to happen that way okay but the fact is I think what stops us from being in that realm is the fact that how much are we able to consciously realize that every moment of what we experience in life itself is a trigger itself is a stimuli for imaging in a way are we mentally too fast? If you could very colloquially say it, are we mentally just too fast? That we don't actually slow down, take a deeper breath and look at that person's face, for example. Simple as that. Okay? So I think that's what actually makes a difference between people. Not the fact that one can imagine or one cannot imagine. I don't believe there's any human who cannot imagine. I don't care what neuroscience tells me. I don't believe it. Okay? I just don't believe it. I think I would say more and more aware of every moment of what you're doing. And yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that is what is the greatest stimuli of imagination. No. I'm saying it is a moment. I'm saying it's a moment. No. No, it is, it is if you can go and anybody, if you can go and stand in front of Niagara Falls, when you see the gushing water and take that deep breath and take that moment, you can do that every moment of your life. And nobody taught you to do that in front of the Niagara Falls. No, there was no tutor, there was no skill development over there. There was no HR department over there. Right? So it actually happened. The point is, and after that, you all, we, all, all of us will notice that we use a lot of adjectives after we see something like that. We all use adjectives. And adjectives is, I think, very interesting because they are about something parallel. It's expression, it's something parallel, right? So you say, you use adjectives that describe, say, the Niagara Falls, or you go to the Grand Canyon, or you see some beautiful temple. We all use adjectives, and they're all at the realm of imaging. No, but the Niagara Falls is an overwhelming stimuli. 
The point is why ka ah, exact ah, that exactly is the point. But the point is can every moment be treated as the similar similar stimuli? And imagination is completely born from your from you able to take that extra breath. That's what makes an artist an artist, I'll tell you, simple. Okay? This whole thing about an artist an artist is the fact that the really beautiful artists, I'm not saying brilliant, I'm not saying perfect, I'm not saying great, I'm saying the beautiful artists, are those who are able to transfer that to every moment of what they perceive, what they feel, what they touch, what they smell. And how do they do it? They don't have skill. There's no skill involved there. It is just, they are able to be more aware. That's all. It's just an awareness. Yes. Yes. I'm a complete extrovert. Go ahead. Now, now you are you're judging the stimuli. I never judged the stimuli at all. You are also perceiving that it's only the flowers that gives artistic creation. No, you are. If you say, if you say the introvert gets his stimuli from flowers, sensitive things, you said it. I'm not saying it. Hang on. Everything is the senses. What is not the senses? Even if I listen to hard rock, it's senses. There's nothing but the senses. Whether you're extrovert or introvert, everybody experiences only through the senses. Okay, it doesn't matter what state. Even on the extrovert and introvert, every, any person who reads genetics will also tell you that experience and environment have a very huge role to play on how a genetic manifestation is actually changing in the individual. All things remaining the same, it is also true that the environment and, the, and your own development, parents, all the blah, blah, blah things that go in, do play a very important role in the same genetic manifestation that is there in the individual. All I'm saying is you can't take that out. I'm not saying genetics is nothing. But this whole accept of, uh, in aspect of introvert and extrovert is about the quality of, of imagination or the, or the kind of imagination. I, I have no issues. I'm not, even, I'm not judging imagination at all. I don't think any of us have a right to judge imagination. The point is any imagination, whether it is from an extrovert, I mean, then would you say, the, the, you know, all artists are, in, I don't think all artists are introverts, first of all. As an artist, I can tell you. I don't think all artists. I'll tell you what all artists have. It's not extrovert, introvert. I think they are, all the beautiful artists are those who can respond to what they are experiencing. They can respond to it to whatever they are experiencing. Expression, I've not even got to that state yet. It is not hypersensitivity. I, I, think that's, that, I think it is very wrong for us to believe that it is a special quality. I'm going to first of all say it is not a special quality. I, I'm going to ask, request you to try it on yourself. And then come back to me and say, no. Please do. Please do. Please, you're welcome to do so and, and come back to me and say, I'm, you're absolutely wrong. It is something that you artists have genetically with you. Fine. I'm willing to hear that. You're but saying it's a conscious practice. No. I says it is. I didn't say practice. I said it's conscious awareness. That's all I kept saying. It's conscious awareness. It is like just what you would do every. Why I'm reiterating what seems almost quasi philosophical or quasi esoteric is because it is not esoteric or philosophical. Okay. I think it's no mumbo jumbo because it is very important. I think for the act of what we're going to talk about now. Yeah, yeah, fine. Please do. Please, please, please go ahead. I, I'd like a discussion. So. And I think that is the stimuli. And when I use the word stimuli or trigger, it may seem almost a little silly. But it is not. I think that is a stimuli. I mean, if you see the great, if you, if you see how everybody, come, you come to the expression, it is about 
that person being able to view life itself as they experience every moment as being a stimuli. Now, whether it means it's a slowing down what is happening, I don't think it is. It is simple thing of putting your window down and just looking. Spend 10 minutes looking at what's happening around you. You will suddenly yourself perceive so many more things than you ever did. And I can tell you, with, you will automatically be imaging. You will imaging stories, you will image uh, situations, you will see a lady selling, a vendor selling, uh, you know, Katrika. And I can tell you, you will build a story on it without yourself knowing. You will see a person hanging from the bus and I can tell you that will be a story. Now this is, this is purely imagination. This is nothing but imagination. This is about creating an altered, you want to call it an altered reality, an altered reality. But that happens only if you are willing to put that window down and just spend the five minutes looking. Yeah, that's, that's also part of it, I guess. Yeah. I agree. No, but, but let's... Uh -huh. Nobody, I'm, nobody is... No, no, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. No, no. You are the one who said you are making the value judgment by saying he thinks of idli. And by thinking of idli in some way you are saying that's a lesser thought than thinking of, of, uh, of thing. I never said that. I, I don't think so. I say somebody is imaginative when I think that his images are in my judgment more valuable. Ah, I am very sorry. I completely... Huh? This different or unique is completely subjective. And this value judgment is, you know, the moment you get into value judgment of anybody's action, I think we are on a point of no discussion. Because I could say your whole statement is nonsensical now, for example. Now, if I say that to you, it's a value judgment on what he said. If I make a value judgment on what he said, first of all, I, there, is no, there is no discussion here. But the fact is there is an imaging happening. Let us not even bother which is a greater image, which is a lesser image. For a person who loves Carnatic music and is in Carnatic music for 100 years, there are certain images that are... Are, are fixed. For somebody who comes and listens to it for the first time, there is something else. Now, I, have, I am nobody to pass qualitative judgment on either image. The, all I am saying is, both are images. That's all. But in that sense, imagination is a 24 thing. That is what I have been saying from the beginning. But the fact is, the person who cannot recognize that it is a 24-7 thing that comes from what is around you, he is going to have less images. That's all I'm saying. Less. I didn't say he does not image. No, sometimes it can be from within you. This within you, this this within you is still an interesting conversation. How much of it is within you? I can have a discussion with you because we, you know, how much of what is believed to be within you is really within you is something we can discuss over tea. You know, we can because it's that's also an important question whether it is really within you or whether it is some sense. Now the point is whether it's within you or outside you or how you perceive it. But the, even the stimuli that's within you at some point, has, does it have an external manifestation that's caused it to be within you? No, for example, I can ask that question. But, you know, I'm not even going. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not, not so worried about it. All I'm saying is, are you aware to the stimuli? Are you aware that there's a stimuli there? Because if you're not aware that there's a stimuli, then the chances that there is less imaging is higher. Full stop. Like he himself said. Like, I mean, his answer actually led me to this beautifully. It's exactly what I'm saying. As long as you are not aware that the old software that I am using is actually a stimuli for me to be able to get a new software, I am never going to get there. That's all I am saying. Now I am going to move to expression. <laughs>